So we're going to get into the Word of God. And if you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking at Joshua 8. So I've titled this message, It's a Battle to Get to the End. Are you going to fight? Are you going to fight? And this is Joshua 8, verses 1 to 8 will be our reading. When you wake up in the morning, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, oh, great, another day, I'm alive, I am expecting God to do something amazing, and I can't wait to see what God is doing? Or when you wake up in the morning, are you dreading the day? Are you tired? Are you upset? Perhaps life is not turning out the way you have planned or expected. And things you were hoping for didn't happen, and things you didn't even pray about actually happened. And things have been hard, and it could be a time where you're having a hard time to be motivated. Well, the truth is, life is up and down. It's like a roller coaster. How many of you like going on roller coasters at the Wonderland? Okay, there's quite a few of you. I don't like roller coasters. I'm sorry. If you take me to Wonderland, I will not to go on them because I remember going on the Mind Buster and I almost died. And I remember going to, um, they had something called the Dragonfly and the Vortex. The Vortex, I don't know if they have it anymore, but it's like 30 seconds. But every so often, my family, we like to go to Vaughn Mills and we see these guys going up that, what's that big one now they have? It, what is it? Yeah, it's crazy. It's high. And you are just getting ready. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not going to see me on there. Okay, so. And to the young people, when we go to Universal Studios, I will be watching you on the roller coasters when you guys go. I will not be on it. Anyways, we have to take it one day at a time. And sometimes life is making sense. And sometimes life is just not making sense. But we have to remember, remember that no matter what is going on in our life, internally or outside in the world, we have to remember that God has a plan. And God has a plan to bless us. God has a plan to love us and to help us. And God has a plan even when we don't understand what's going on in life. And we have to understand that the plan of God doesn't happen without a fight. This is not without a battle. And the question is, are we willing to fight spiritually so that we will see all the things God has for us? And so I want us to read Joshua chapter 8, verses 1 to 8. And this is a setup for the story of the Israelites going to the promised land and getting ready to battle. So here's what the Bible says. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered you into, your, into the hands of the king of Ai, his people, his ch city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves and set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and set them out at night with these orders. Listen carefully. You are to set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from it. All of you be on alert. I and all those with me will advance on the city. And when the men came out against us, as they did before, we will flee from them. They will pursue you as until we have lured them away from the city, for they will say they are running away from as us as they did before. So when we flee from them, you are to rise up from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it into your hand when you have taken the city, set it on fire, do what the Lord has commanded, see to it, you have my orders. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, this is the word of God, and we believe that you are speaking. And we thank you, Lord, that whether you're speaking to Joshua and the people in the Old Testament, whether you're speaking to Paul and the disciples in the New Testament, and we believe that you are speaking to us now, your word is always clear, and your word is always to bless us. And we pray, God, right now, that you will bless us in what we're going to learn, and we pray that we will leave this place encouraged, knowing that we have met with God. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So this story is Joshua is the one speaking to the, the Israelites. This is the people of God. But you have to understand to get to this point in Joshua 8, it has been a journey. It all started in Egypt when they were slaves and God called them to leave Egypt and go into the wilderness and called Moses to lead them out. And uh, when they get to the desert, they have to, they have to fight. And so since the time they leave Egypt, it's been a fight. First of all, when they were in Egypt, they had to get permission from Pharaoh, the one in command, to let them go. And that was a battle. That was not easy. But after God sent 10 plagues of God proving that he is the one and true and living God, he lets them go. But after he lets them go, he changes his mind and he chases them. And so that was one battle facing where they had to get Pharaoh to let them go. Now the Israelites are leaving. They're walking. They're on. They're they're not like on a chariot. They're not on any horses. They're traveling by foot. Now they get to this big sea, and right behind them is Pharaoh, and there there are six hundred chariots. And this is now the next battle they have to face. But God comes through and parts the Red Sea, and they walk on dry land. So this battle they get through. Then as the Israelites are in the desert. They're probably thinking, and we are always thinking too when we're walking with God, oh, finally I'm going to get some rest, and finally I'm not going to have any more problems, and finally there's not going to be any trouble. But when they get to the desert, they have to learn to trust God, and they have to learn that water comes from a rock, and manna comes from heaven, and there's a pillar of fire at night to lead them, and then there's a pillar of cloud in the day. And so they begin to learn they have to daily depend on the Lord. And why were they going through this? Because God had promised his people that they would see and experience a land filled with milk and honey. And Moses didn't get to go into the land because he disobeyed the Lord. He only saw it. But Joshua was the next leader and he was leading the people now into the new land. And so here's what the Bible says in verse 1. Jo the Lord said to Joshua, don't be afraid, do not be discouraged. And this is number one, it's a battle to get to the promise of God, but when the time comes, you need to embrace it, you need to embrace it. They have finally arrived to the promise point. They finally are seeing the hand of God come true, and they've seen God's word become a reality. And in, in our own lives, you will finally see what God has promised you. It will come true and it will be different for everyone. Like what God tells you in your prayer time and in your Bible study time or when you're even here at the church, God speaks to us in different places at different times. And what I'm trying to say here is that the promise or the plan of God comes true at a certain point. And in my own life, I am waiting for promises to come true that God has told me about. They haven't happened yet, but I'm believing it will happen. And in the Bible, there are many examples of promises or plans that God gave to his people. For example, Abraham and Sarah, you're going to have a son. Joseph, you're going to be the second person in power. David, you're going to be the next king. Mary, you're going to have the Son of God. All of these people had promises or plans from God. And for you, what is your promise? What is the plan of God in your life? Is it healing? Maybe you're sick and God has promised you healing. Is it going to school? Is it getting married or having children? Is it seeing a business or a ministry? You know, whatever God is asking you to do or whatever God is telling you and he speaks to us, he wants us to move with courage. And it takes a long time to get to this point. Remember, the Israelites had to pass through Pharaoh. They had to get through the Red Sea. They had to watch the fire at night. They had to watch the cloud in the day. And depending on God on what they would have to eat and depending on God on what they would have to drink, it was battle after battle after battle, but every step of the way, God was with them, and God provided, and God helped, and God guided, and now was the time to claim the promise that God had given them, and the same for us. Now is the time where you're going to see the full promise of what God told you, and perhaps you've been feeling scared about what God is calling you to. And God is saying to each of us, don't be afraid, embrace it. You know, some of you, you've been praying about maybe like getting a promotion at work and finally you get the promotion. 
But now you're questioning yourself. You're saying, oh, you know what? I don't think I can do this. Or you're saying things like, maybe I don't belong here and, and I'm not qualified. Well, I have to say to you, stop. Don't say that because you had to battle to get to that point. You had to battle people. You had to battle position. You had to battle, you know, we call it office politics or work politics. You know, you belong there and will you be courageous and take the position that God gave you? Maybe you're in a position where you're married or you're having a child and you're saying things like, Lord, I'm not going to be a good wife. I'm not going to be a good husband. I'm not going to be a good parent. And I'm not going to be good at this at all. And God is saying to be courageous. Stop. Yes. You, had, you had to battle to get to this point. Maybe you didn't grow up in a functional home and you didn't have the best environment, but God is giving you this promise. He believes you can be a good husband. He believes you can be a good wife and a good parent. Will you trust the Lord? So what are you scared of right now? And God is saying you need to go with courage. Be courageous. Will you move forward? Well, the Bible says in verse 1 that you are to move forward with courage, but it also says, Joshua, take the whole army with you. Go up and attack Ai. And this is number two. You, you will need to be all in before you see the fullness of God's promise and plan in your life. Last time he told the people of God in Joshua 7, 3, he said, take part of the army. This time, did you notice in the Bible it says, take the whole army. And so why did he say that? Well, one commentary said maybe he just wanted, God wanted all of them to experience the victory of God. But, but, but if they had a thousand men, God was saying, take all a thousand. If they had a hundred thousand men, God was saying, take all 100,000. Whoever was in the army needed to go. And this reminds us that when God is promising us things in life, we have to be all in. We have to invest all of our time, all of our energy, all of our resources, all of the, the people, the power that we have to see what God has in store for us. And what does that look like today? Well, if you are sick, to be all in, it means you need to go to every medical appointment. You need to talk to your doctor. You need to take all your treatments. You need to follow the doctor's orders. Amen? You need to follow the doctor's orders. And you need to exercise and change your plan of eating. You have to be all in. And if you're in school, it means you have to invest the time to study. You have to pass all the exams. You have to spend money on school. And you may need to find a job in order to support your schooling or, you know, get a scholarship. And you're going to have to say no to some people who want you to be in some social event or, or take away your time. You have to be all in. You have to be all in. And if you're a parent, it means you're going to have to discipline your child every time, not sometimes every time and my mom's not here and I can say this she disciplined us every time there was not a time where I thought I could get away with something it was always a discipline and you're gonna have to give yourself over and over to your children and you're gonna have to watch your spending because now you're a parent you're gonna have to be all in and if you're waiting for a breakthrough, it means you're going to have to pray every day. You're going to have to use all your energy, and you're going to have to pray and believe and trust. You need to be all in. You can't be in a quarter of the time or half the time or three-fourths of the time. If you want to see the promises of God come to pass in your life, you have to be all in. And perhaps you've been brave, but this is the area of change you need to make. You haven't been fully committed. You know what? You show up late to work. When your spouse gives you a hard time, you don't forgive him or her. Sometimes you're in service, sometimes you forget about God. You mean to give your money to the Lord, but then you blow it and you spend all the money. We mean well, but we are not all in. We need to be all in, all in. And when you are all in and you're going with courage, then you also need to fight. The Bible says, Go up and attack AI. And this is number three. You will also have to fight for your promises. Now, God tells Joshua they need to go to AI, and this means they're going to have to fight. And this is where most people stop in their walk with God. In, um, most people believe in God, and most people are, are consistent, but when it gets too hard, sometimes we are people that give up, then we don't fight. God, it's too hard. I lost my job. 
Lord, I lost my spouse. I don't understand. I don't want to believe anymore. God, I can't handle the stress anymore or the next bad thing in my life. I'm tired. I'm weary. And those are all true things. Because guess what? You know what? Even Pastor Tina gets tired too. I get tired of what's going on in the world. And I get tired with what, what is going on in my life and so forth. But if you want to see what God has in store for you and your family, you're going to have to fight. And I'm not talking about a physical battle. I'm talking about spiritual battle. This is, you got through pa round one, great. You got past round two, amazing. You got past round three, that's great. But now, you are stopping. This is like sports. I believe in sports, you have to get past three rounds before you get to the end. And if you're watching the NBA Finals right now, we have the Denver Nuggets playing the Miami Heat, and it's a 3-1 lead. The D Denver Nuggets might, I think, for the first time win a championship. But you know, to get to the championship, it's really, really hard to get to this point. They're practically dying as they're playing. And so, in our spiritual walk with God, you have to do the same thing too. You have to keep going. You have to keep fighting. You have to keep believing, and you have to keep trusting in the Lord. Because if you stop now, you're not going to see the promises of God. And why do you think Paul says in Ephesians 6, 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We are talking about wicked spiritual forces that are out there. We're talking about demons and Satan going around trying to ruin everybody's life. And that's why Paul says our wrestle is not against human people. It's against these demonic evil spirits. The Bible says that he who started good work in us will complete it. And when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he battled with God. He was there and he was uh, on his knees and he said, God, I don't want to go through this. But then he said, not my will, but your will, Lord. Jesus went through the plan of God, which was to suffer to die and rise on the third day so that we could have eternal life. But in order to see that happen, he had to battle and fight through. And you're going to have to fight too. You have to fight or attack the enemy against you. Like the Israelites, they had to go into the promised land and attack the people in Jericho. And now we're in chapter 8, they have to attack the people of Ai. And we are going to have to battle to see the promises of God come true in our life too. So if you are married, are you going to let Satan or people, family and friends steal your joy? Or are you going to do what it takes to fight for your marriage? Are you going to forgive your spouse even when he or she hurts you? Ladies, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, are you going to respect your spouse? And men, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, are you going to love your wife? Or are you going to let your marriage be bitter, boring, and mediocre? You need to fight. And maybe spend less time watching TV, and spend less time on the internet, and spend more time with your spouse. You know what? It's okay if you want to go out for dinner. You can do that. <laughs> that will be a good idea. You have to fight for what God has given you. And what about your kids? Are you going to let Satan take your kids and distract your children? Are you going to let the world tell your kids how to live, how, what to wear, what to listen, and what to do? Parents, please take responsibility. You need to fight for your children. You need to open your mouth and say, I don't want you hanging out with those kids. I don't want you listening to that music. These are your children. God gave them to you. You need to be their spiritual leader. And you need to spend time with them, discipline them, bring them to church, build a relationship with them. You need to fight. I am very tired of the government telling our kids what to do and teaching them things that don't belong in the school system. We need to say something and we need to petition and we need to, to just not just stand around because most people don't believe in what they're teaching. And are you going to let people tell you you can't finish school and tell you you can't do this job and tell you you can't take this position? Or are you going to listen to the voice of God who tells us the truth? Are you going to fight? Well, God told Joshua, don't be afraid. Take the whole army and attack. And we need to remember, it's a battle before you get to the end. 
This isn't round one anymore, okay? You're past round one. This isn't round two anymore. This is not round three. This is the finals. This is the championship. This is getting to the end, and this is where you have to die to yourself to see that all that God has for you. The Israelites were getting to the end of their journey, and so are you going to fight, or are you just going to give in? You know, you're just going to be like, okay, here you go, Satan. You can have this. You can have my marriage. You can have my money. You can have my health. You can have my family. You can have the church. Or are you going to pray, and are you going to fast, and are you going to fight? Some of you are saying, I can't. It's too hard. I won't. I'm tired. Well, here's what God's word says in the Bible. It says in verse four, 1, For I have delivered you into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. And you shall do to Ai and its kings as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves, set an ambush behind the city. So the Bible tells us that God tells them how it's going to end before they go to fight. He says, I'm going to give you the victory. And you know what? The same with us. This is number four. God tells us what will happen in our lives while you are fighting while you are fighting. Now, I think there's some of you here that don't believe that. I don't think there's some of you that actually believe that God cannot speak. Some of you are still struggling with that God can speak to you and struggling with that the Lord can tell you how it's all going to uh, uh, pan out before you even begin. And in this story, it tells us that God tells the Israelites how it's going to end before they even go to battle. And you know what? God has done the same thing with us as well. God told you your marriage is going to be well. You are going to be healed. That you are, that the person you're praying for, whether it's your family, your friend, the person you're praying for to come to Jesus, God gave you a word and said they are going to come to the Lord. And God told you about your future marriage, or your kids, your job, your finance, whatever. God told the Israelites, I'm going to deliver you. And the Lord is doing the same thing with us. He tells us things in advance, and then we have to battle it through. Now, Isaiah 46.10 says the following. It's not going to be on the screen. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. And you know what the Bible is saying here is God tells you how it's going to end before you get to the end. So you don't need to be afraid. And you don't need to be scared. You just need to trust the Lord. Because God is saying here, it's done. It's ours. The victory is over. The victory is ours. But you have to believe. You have to believe. And are you going to be brave enough to believe? You know, when Nehemiah was told by God that the uh, walls were in ruin, and he said, you need to go and build the walls, God gave him something in his heart and his spirit to know that he needed to do that. And when he got there, do you think it was easy for him? No, he had to fight. He had to battle all these enemies that were giving them a hard time and, and ridiculing them. And then he would have, he stationed people to pray and stationed people to fight when people would come. And you know, after 54 days, the walls were built. So God had told him in advance or told him in his spirit that this is what you need to do and you need to go do it, but you have to fight. The same with the Israelites when they were in Jericho. God told them you need to walk around the wall seven times and then you need to shout and it seemed very crazy to do that. But God told them if you do that, you're going to get the victory. And you know what? They walked around the walls and did what they had to do to see the victory. And in the Old Testament, when Joseph was told he'll be second command, do you think it was easy for him? No. His brothers sold him into slavery. He gets there, he's a slave. Pharaoh makes him a slave. Then his Pharaoh's wife accuses him of rape. Then he goes into jail. Then when he's in jail, he helps somebody, and that person forgets about him. And it was, not, it was like two years later after that, then he finally gets out. And it was like 13 years of being in bondage, 13 years of being a slave, and finally he comes out. And I'm saying all this stuff to tell you that God can tell you what is going to happen in your life, all the plans, but you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight. You can't just sit around and just say, okay, you know what? Maybe it wasn't meant to be. Because let me tell you something. God told them the land was theirs. And God's been telling us 
things about our life and we have to fight. And so this is what the Bible says in verse 3. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. And this is number 5. We need to move forward with God's plan. So it says, I'm just going to paraphrase here. It says, we didn't read the entire verse. It says he chose 30,000 men. He told them, don't go too far. He says, be alert that, that the enemy is running from us. And then take the city. And this tells us that Joshua moved forward. Despite how things looked. And despite the fact that they were not at the end, but in a battle. And we have to do the same thing. What is God asking you to do right now in this season? You know, do you need to talk to your spouse? Do you need to go to the bank? Maybe God's saying you need to save your money or, or do something with your money. Do you need to open your Bible? Um, do you need to start reading your Bible more regularly or attending a Bible study? Do you need to start giving to the Lord? Or maybe you need to make a financial budget. Maybe you need to go to the gym or see a doctor. And what is God asking you to do and will you do it? Or have you been sitting around and not doing what God wants you to do? Well, what happens when we listen to God? Well, let's see what the Bible says here in verse 24. It says, Israel finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in the wilderness where they had chased them. And when every one of them had been put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed those who were in it. 12,000 men and women fell that day, and all the people of Ai. And this is number six. When we listen to God, we will see the victory. We will see the victory. Amen? Exactly what God told them to do worked. God said, don't be afraid. Take your whole army. Fight. He tells them how it's going to end. And then Joshua moves forward and made the plan. And when we do everything that God tells us to do and we listen, then we get the victory. And how many of you want to see the victory of God in your life and the blessings of God? I know many of you. Well, I believe all of us do. And so that means you need to do the work. So if you are having marital problems, you need to pray about your marriage. You need to maybe go see a counselor and you need to do the work. If you're having issues with your children, you need to pray for your children and you need to spend time with them. We need to work on our relationship with God. Are we putting in the time of listening to the Lord and spending time praying and reading? Are we coming to worship? And when we go to work, are we going on time? And if we're having health issues, are we exercising? Because when you do those simple things, then you will see change in your life. And a lot of people right now are going through anxiety and depression and despair. And I talked about this a little bit last week. And when you are reading your Bible every day or, you, you know, you, some of you have it on your phone and you do your devotionals every day, it really helps you to stay calm and to be at peace because you are believing and trusting in the Lord. And so when bad things begin to happen, then you are, you're keeping your cool. You're not worrying about it because you're trusting in God. When you do the schoolwork, then you will graduate. When you do the work in your marriage, your marriage gets better. When you spend time with your kids, then you and your kids have a good relationship. And when you're not engaging in the wrong things and you're, and not, you're saying no to friends, because sometimes we have to say no to our friends. I'm sorry, I cannot go there anymore and I cannot do that anymore. You be a brave person because the Bible says bad character corrupts good character. Or bad friends or friends, bad friends can corrupt good character. And that is true. And if you go to the doctor and you do all the things that you're supposed to do, what the doctor says, when you go back for your appointment, guess what the doctor's gonna say? You have improved. Now, are you willing to fight and do what God wants you to do? Because, because if you do exactly what God wants you to do, you're going to see the victory. And so, you know, Jesus had to do the same thing when he came to this earth. When he came on this earth, it was not easy. He had to battle it out. Satan tempted him on the mountain three times. So if Satan is going to bother Jesus and tempt him three times, do you think he's going to leave you and I alone? 
No, he's also going to attack us. But Jesus did not give in. He bellowed every time. He fought. He listened to God the Father. And you know what happened? He was obedient to the Lord. And you know what happened? He got the victory for us. He died and rose on the third day so that we could have everlasting life. And today when we take our communion and when we go to prayer time, I want you to think about the thing or the many things in your life that you need to give to God. And you need to say to the Lord, you know what, God, I gave up on this. I gave up on this promise. I gave up on this plan. And today I want to be like the Israelites. I want to fight. I want to fight because it's a battle to the end. And, and are you going to fight for it? And I believe God is saying to each one of us today, you need to fight. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message. We thank you for your word. You have given us promises. You have given us plans. And we are in the ending stretch. But we are tired. Some are very tired. Even getting here sometimes can be so hard. Getting up in the morning can be hard. Getting the energy to forgive somebody or the energy to, to, to exercise. Lord, give us new strength and new power. May the Holy Spirit give us unction. And Lord, help us to be a people who fight, not physically fight, but spiritually fight. We are praying for solid marriages. We are praying for good health. We are praying for children who raise, who love the Lord. We are praying for grandchildren to follow God. We are praying to be an example to our children. We are praying for stability in the world. We believe and trust God that you have a good plan. But we know that it's not without a battle. And so God, today, we give them the many things that we stop believing in. And we, we say, Lord, we come into agreement. We are trusting in your word and we're trusting in your promise. And we let the Holy Spirit lead us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.